And we welcome you from Portland, Oregon. March Madness has arrived to the Pacific Northwest. A 4-13 matchup to get us started today. First on the card, Davidson and Louisville. This makes up part of the West bracket in the round of 64. That part of the bracket that will end up in Phoenix as the regional in the Sweet 16. And two teams that want to get up and go. Bob McKillop, the head coach of the Davidson Wildcats. 23 seasons, all at Davidson. And all five of his starters averaging in double figures in scoring this year. Damon Brooks leads the way, the 6'7 forward, at 16 points per game. For Louisville, Peyton Siva, as he goes, Louisville goes. They've got a lot of size and a great shot blocker in Gorgie Jang. And there's Rick Patino, his 11th season at Louisville. He's taken five teams and three different programs to the Final Four. As we are set to tip things off here in Portland, Brian Anderson with Dan Bonner and Jen Hildreth. Great to have you with us from Portland. Mike Littlewood, Tony Padilla, Kelly Self, our officiating crew. And Dan, a lot of eyes on this particular part of the bracket in Portland. A lot of intriguing matchups, including this one here with Davidson and Louisville. Yeah, this should be a pretty good matchup. And here you see Louisville coming out with the pressure. Davidson is a team that likes to run, and so we'll see if they can handle the pressure, get the ball up and down. They're a good three-point shooting team. Davidson coming out of the Southern Conference. They won the Southern Conference tournament. Meanwhile, Louisville out of the Big East and a fast start for Louisville as Keurig comes up with another bucket. Louisville had a lot of grinders in the Big East during the season, but this is the way they would like to play, get up and down. Both of these teams want to run they want to shoot quick play up tempo oh, blocked away as Jang comes in strong and that is such a big part of Louisville's game and their interior defense with Gorgie Jang and Jang picked up the foul right there and that's if you're Davidson this is what you have to do you've got to take the ball and you've got to be strong going to the basket don't worry about the block shot Brooks just took it up and Jang met him at the rim Officials called that one a foul, so break for Davidson as Brooks gets to go to the line. Yeah, so big opportunity early for Davidson. Davidson Keep. counting on their their shooting today, you would guess. Well, Louisville wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Davidson with their athleticism. One out of two for Damon Brooks. And if you're Davidson, I think for a good free throw shooting team, you want to value all those opportunities. Or the lightning quick. Peyton Siva. Davidson mostly plays man to man, but they don't really have anybody who can keep Peyton Siva from going around. So we may see some zone from Davidson a little later on. Foul on Siva. Well, Dan, you'd like teams that were hot to finish the year. Both of these teams were. Bob McKillop's club won five straight to finish, including a double overtime win against Western Carolina to win the Southern Conference Tournament and receive the automatic bid. They are a deadly three-point shooting team. Brooks kicks it inside. Good luck. Cochran has it knocked away. Brooks again finds some space, and maybe that foul on Jang had him a little hesitant in the paint there. <laughs> he wasn't hesitant the first time. He knocked it away. Brooks just really clever at 6'7". Got that ball up over Jang. Kirk, the three-point shooter. Jang with a rebound, goes to the ground, trying to get a timeout, and does so. So Jang, an early timeout for Louisville. Underway in Portland. Could you hold on a second? It's your money. Roll. And Gorgie Jang is one of the opponents. Jang blocked 13 shots in four games in the Big East tournament. He's a real factor on the inside. Davidson will do all they can to put him in foul trouble. Has one already. As Siva hangs in the air, gets fouled. Or Peyton Siva sporting the infrareds today, Louisville. And he's infrared on his way to the basket. About as quick as it gets. Right. And Siva will shoot free throws. One of the things we've seen early is Davidson just doesn't have anybody who can keep him out of the lane. And the Wildcats are going to have to figure out a way to do that because he really can do a lot of damage. That time he picked up a personal foul against uh, Cohen. Siva out of Seattle. It's a long way to go here in Portland for Louisville, but a bit of a homecoming of sorts for Siva. About a three-hour drive. He has a ton of friends and family here today. 
About 50 on the pass list, we were told. And they have been vocal all morning. Hooper with that zone pressure. Now they drop back. And this is basically a matchup zone. There's Brooks coming up a little short. And he went with the right hand that time. I think he expected the presence of Jing, who wasn't really close. Well, Brooks is a lefty. Smith looking for room. There's Jang. And now Siva goes to work. He's creating his own space. Yeah, just about everything Louisville's done on the offensive end has either been in transition or off Siva taking the ball into the middle. Cochran tied up more. Remember, all five of these starters for Davidson averaging in double figures. It gives you a picture of a very balanced team. A team that likes to push up tempo. Nice Louisville's done a nice job early in this game getting back on them. Now, really good pressure by Louisville. They really good at the ball in there, and that's one of the reasons why they can pressure the ball. Somebody takes it inside, and Jang swats it away. Second block for Gorgi Jang. And this is exactly what we were talking about before. Davidson Kuhlman thinks he's loose going down the lane, and Jang just takes one big step and swats it out of bounds. Four seconds left on the shot clock. And with every block for Jang, Asiva will take a seat. He adds to his school record. That's a 113 now. Shot clock down to one. And a three-pointer, J.P. Coleman saves the possession for Davidson. That is a big part of the Davidson offense, and that's something I think they're going to have to do today to stay in this game and have a chance to win, and that is knock down the three, and that was a tough, contested shot. Don't forget, you control the remote. You can watch all games on all four networks, CBS, True TV, TNT, and TBS, where we are today. A lot of terrific games going on. How about Davidson offensively for Bob McKillop? Bob McKillop, we talked to him yesterday, and he told us that the basis of his offensive philosophy is to attack, run, and push. And here's, <laughs> here's you can see the result of that, one of the highest scoring teams in the country. They do a nice job spreading the defense, attacking the basket, and shooting the three. And a high-powered offense, one of the best defenses in the country in Louisville. Something's got to give here as Jang misses on his first attempt. And Peyton Siva comes right back in for Rick Pitino. Gorgi Jang speaks five languages out of Senegal. And he has been a great addition. Rick Pitino says he's improving every day, every year. He's only been in the United States for three years now, just a sophomore. Right to the basket and a foul goes Cochran. If that's Jang, that's two. And it is. So the second foul on Jang, and that could be a game changer the rest of this half for Louisville. He surpassed Purvis Ellison for blocks in a season, Gorgie Jang. Those are some very, very impressive <laughs> numbers. But they're such a different team without him, and now Patino has a decision to make here with two fouls on Jang at this point. I think you've got to give Davidson a lot of credit. Uh, never know how a team is going to react to the presence of a shot blocker like Jang, but uh, Davidson has attacked, and as a result, now Jang goes to the bench, and you can't block any shots from over there. And this makes Louisville just a very different team, both offensively and defensively. The market at 8-8. Eight, eight. As Jang goes to the bench, about four minutes into this one, front man is in for Davidson. As is Swapshire for Jay. Siva splits the two defenders and right to the basket. He was just relentless. Davidson actually did a pretty good job helping out initially, but Siva stayed with it. Siva, the most outstanding player in the Big East Championship. Average just shy of 14 points. He also crashed the boards over six rebounds, and he dished out nearly six assists in the Big East Championship. And a great run by Louisville. They won four games in four days to win the automatic bid as Mann, just into the game, collects his first field goal. 
a good sign for Davidson, Brian. They look pretty comfortable on offense. Louisville hadn't been able to force him out of anything. And a traveling call on Siva with a little assistance from Bob McKillop. Siva can do some damage in the paint, slips the defenders. He's going to have to come up big with Jang on the bench. In New York with an All State point battle on True TV. Let's send you back to Portland, Brian and Dan. All right, Greg, thanks. Murray State, the last team to lose after a 23 0 start. And that Southern Miss team, they play really well defensively. That's a very, very interesting matchup. And Here here's, here's a turnover. All tied at 10 in the early going here in Portland. Goal number one for Davidson was try to eliminate the shot blocker Jang somehow, some way. Foul trouble has him on the bench right now. And we'll see if Davidson can capitalize. Global basketball. Goal number two was to not turn the ball over. That was the first Davidson turnover. <laughs> Siva going to the basket. Siva with the right hand slips it in. Uh, Davidson's going to have to figure something out because they simply cannot guard him. He scored three baskets in the game. They've all been of that variety. He just beats him out on the perimeter and goes straight to the goal. All five field goals for Louisville have come in the paint. And as Dan mentioned, Siva with three of them. Well, actually, he doesn't go straight to the goal. He takes a very circuitous route, but he gets there. He can get himself in some small spaces. Jamal Brooks back in. He loses it. And another turnover. So a couple of turnovers after the timeout for Davidson. Smith to the basket. Kirk is there for the board, and Brooks finally pulls it down. One of the dangers for Davidson of allowing Louisville to get out and run is that really helps Louisville's ability to rebound the ball offensively. Davidson, a big win earlier this year, their biggest against Kansas in Kansas City. That was in mid-December. Had to win their conference zone. 16 and 2 in the Southern Conference, Davidson. Cochran lines one up. Yeah, that's very interesting because Davidson really having a tough time with that Louisville. It's a combination zone and man to man. Davidson having a tough time with it, but that's twice now that they've just hit long threes. That'll solve a lot of problems. Coleman and Cochran with three pointers on the board. The first lead for Davidson, and it's grabbed right back by Louisville. As Kirik goes strong to the basket and more points in the paint right. from the guards for Louisville. Everything right at the basket for the Louisville Cardinals. Another opportunity that's Droney long. Offensive board from Brooks. Here Brooks is battling for the rebounds, but that's going to Louisville. Let's take a look at the Infinity Coaches Spotlight. And Bob McKillop, all 23 of his seasons as a head coach at Davidson. Eight-time Southern Conference Coach of the Year. And look at that last thing there. All 75 of the seniors to play under McKillop have graduated. Probably his most famous player, of course, was Steph Curry. And Curry left after his junior season. But Curry was actually, during the lockout, Curry was actually back on the Davidson campus working. He actually took three classes, finished them. He's still working on his degree. And Curry, part of, part of that 08 run, that lone win. One and four in the round of 64 games. But what a run it was for Davidson in 08. Siva throws it away. He's looking underneath for Swapshire. Let's take you back to 2008. It was a big run for Davidson. And Steph Curry averaged 32 points a game. Shot 44% from three-point range, did Steph Curry. Finally losing to Kansas. Well, he, was, 16. <laughs> he was really the big story of that tournament. And this is a very different, da different Davidson team. They don't have a guy who's going to get 32 every night. They really spread it around, as we've mentioned a couple of times. Little jump hook there from Cohen. Got Jay Cohen, Nick Cochran, J.P. Coleman. Those are the, the big three, along with DeMond Brooks for Davidson. And not a senior in the group among the starters. Davidson a chance here. Up a point. 11.50 remaining 
in the first half in Portland. Our first game of four today from Portland. Man, a little bit short, and it's a foul going the other way. Foul on Jake Cohen. Take a timeout. Davidson doing what they want so far. Having a 7-6 wingspan certainly helps make it easier to block shots, but it's all about the timing. He said, I've got to stay in my feet. Shot blockers love to go for those shot fakes, and he's getting better at it. We're playing with a couple of fouls now, guys. Yeah, Jank back in, so see how he plays with those, those fouls. And a lot of time left in this first half. We'll see if that affects his aggressiveness, and Davidson went right at him early in the game, and I don't expect that to change now. That's Smith to Jang. He'll take the shot. No, and here comes Davidson. Chance to add to their lead. Davidson has hit a couple of three-pointers. Kuhlman and Cochran on the board. And five different guys have scored for Davidson. Louisville hadn't hit a jump shot yet because they haven't had to. They've taken the ball all the way to the basket. All right, their points are the paint from the guards for Louisville. Cohen will let one rip. And there's Jang with the rebound. I think it's important in this game for Davidson if Cohen is going to hit that shot. Cohen is capable of it, and I think he's got to make a few from out there. Jang, nice little turnaround in the paint. Jang is more than just a shot blocker. He, he has a couple of post moves in there. That jump shot was a little bit out of his range, but he can get the ball down close to the basket. He can score fairly effectively. Yeah, Patino with that story about Fabnello and Fabnello choosing Syracuse, but he did not expect Jang to be so good so fast. Oh, he got him again. Yeah, he did. Wow. Number three as Cohen goes right after him. We've been talking about Jang and his defense, but here you can see this is a nice little move on the inside. Fakes one way, comes back with the right hand. But here Cohen aggressively taking the ball to the basket, and Jang, despite those two fouls, going for the block, picking up foul number three. And that's going to force Patino to bring on his freshman, Shane Behannon. And back to the bench goes Jang. He's logged about five minutes of action here. And this just makes Louisville smaller, and it allows Davidson uh, more of a threat on the inside. Jake Cohen, an outstanding free throw shooter. Shot nearly 88%, and wouldn't you know it? One out of two for Cohen. All tied up. Receiva. Pass Cohen, and a travel. Well, you can get exclusive in-game video highlights, up-to-the-minute scores, and stats of all NCAA March Madness games at NCAA.com. One of the things that we've seen, the Davidson Wildcats, and here Cohen is over on the sideline, might have some blood there, and they're just putting that on to cover up the bleeding. You have Under the rules this year, you got 20 seconds to correct a blood problem, and you can stay in the game. And that's real quickness on the part of that Davidson trainer over there. Get that sleeve on the arm. Got to be, got to be ready if you're the trainer. You only got 20 seconds. Got to have a good cut, man. Well, Davidson breaks the pressure, and a three-pointer. Kalinowski unable to connect. But that's a good the run shot that Davidson. Davidson has to make. They've got to be able to beat that pressure. When they get an open jump shot, they got to knock it down. Siva misses from close. Swapshire the board. Bodies on the floor. Keurig. The hand it strong in the paint finishes. My goodness. Shane Bahannon, 6'6 freshman out of Cincinnati. He's been getting a lot of minutes, especially after the injury to Joaquin Buckles. And he can do a lot of that in the paint. Another three-pointer missed, and we'll keep an eye on the shooting numbers for Davidson as Cochran comes up a little short. Kirik, nice. You know, you take those quick threes without taking the ball inside, making the defense move, and you miss them. That allows your opponent to get out in transition, and that's where Louisville has been at their best. Well, Patino is asking for a little more out of Kirik. Not just a, a three-point shooter. He wants him with a little mid-range game to find himself open to attack, and he's done so in this game. 
Louisville's really doing a nice job defensively. I think Davidson is playing a little bit more quickly than they want to. They're sort of rushing things on the offensive end. Sebo, way too much dribbling. Trying to get people in the right place. And Smith carries it. Turnover, Louisville. Take it back. A couple of missed opportunities for Davidson there. Well, this is this is what you want. If you break the press, you get the ball down the court to one of your good three-point shooters. And when you miss that shot, that allows Louisville to get out and go. And when you're playing in transition and you've got strong guys inside like Shane Bahannon, really tough to block them out. Siva back to the bench. The strength of Siva's game is not playing in the half court. If Siva can play in an up and down game and really utilize that speed, he is much, much more effective. Davidson has missed their last six field goal attempts, and they're 0 for their last five from three point range. And add one more to it, 0 for seven, missed the dunk. And Kirik back the other way, a foul. He will shoot. Louisville. Weathering an early storm without Jang. Now the lead as we take a break from Portland. Brian Anderson with Dan Bonner, Jen Hildreth. Great to have you with us. We are in Portland, Louisville. Out ahead of Davidson 2016 at our tournament summary so far. How about the goings on in Dayton? The comebacks. <laughs> BYU coming back from 25 down Tuesday against Iona. Western Kentucky preceded that. Coming back from 16 down with less than five to go. Something else. And that's what the NCAA tournament is. You yeah. get your opportunity, you take advantage, and you have that opportunity till the clock runs out. <laughs> so no reason to stop playing. And the first four on Tuesday and Wednesday, and the first four darling, the first four to final four, is uh, in our town here. We'll have that game later for you. VCU against Wichita State, 715 Eastern on CBS later today. So Louisville with free throws out of the timeout. And a six-point lead over Davidson. Davidson all of a sudden has gone cold. Talk about VCU, and automatically you get the Louisville four-court press. Swapshire just a Blackshire with a hounding. Shot clock already down to seven. Yeah, they're not running any offense. They're just trying to dribble the ball. In survival mode as man lets up a wild shot. And shot clock violation. Outstanding defensive possession for Louisville. We talked about Davidson's ability to handle this Louisville pressure. And it's not just a matter of not turning it over. You've got to get the shots that you want to get. And the Louisville pressure has been very, very good. Man forced into a tough shot. Doesn't hit anything. Shot clock violation. That's why Davidson has missed some shots. Louisville's really turned up the defensive pressure. Davidson has not scored a field goal in the last five minutes. They are 0 for their last eight. Sarah Poets comes away with a loose ball. Davidson in need of a bucket. Now they're in need of an easy basket, and Louisville hadn't given him any of those lately. Man coming off the bench. And trying to fight through a double team. I did a nice job, but that's very, very, you know, that's not very aggressive. Oh, there's a good look inside the man. Well done. You know, when you're just trying to hang on to the ball, it's very difficult to run your offense. But Davidson, they're able to tough it out and get a dunk. So Davidson finally wiggles free inside his man on a good look from Coleman. Our first of four from Portland. Our game summary, Louisville answered an early storm from Davidson. Davidson finally snapping an 0 for, 0 for 8. They snapped with that basket right before the timeout. Latino during that timeout was barking for a foul underneath from Mann. Keurig lines up a three. No. So one and done for Louisville. Davidson down four. Thus far, Louisville has done a great job getting back on defense and getting that defense set. Sarapovic misses the three. Kurek takes it right to Sarapovic. And well done on the defensive end. 
Uh, Davidson wants to push it, and they're going to have to make some threes. Now only two of eight from beyond the three-point arc, and they can't win this game shooting that kind of percentage from beyond the arc. Davidson made their first two three-pointers. They've missed their last six. Cochran, beautiful pass inside to Cohen. Got to respect Cochran's ability to shoot the three, and Siva went for the pump fake. That allowed Cochran to get in the lane. Cochran is quick, not Siva quick, but he's quick. They're just picking us up here. Louisville is without their best defender right now. Gorgie Jang on the bench with three fouls in the first half, and he's hardly played in this game. Good look into Siva. So the head of the freshman finds the point guard. Knocked away, Smith, a foul. Now, what, what happens when somebody penetrates into the lane? Watch right here. you got to come to help, and that lets this guy get open, and you're able to score. And that's why it's so important you don't let people get by you out on the perimeter. <laughs> Very few good things happen defensively when guys can get into the lane. Chris Smith, Jared Swapshire check in. Tino searching for some combinations. This is a, a Louisville team that used so many different starting lineups this year. Another wide open Cohen inside. Damon Brooks found him. And Cohen has found the rim a couple of times on the last two possessions. Shows you the versatility of the Davidson team on offense. You can defend the three, they can get it inside. Swapshire answers for Louisville. Four point Cardinal lead. Louisville doing a great job getting out and covering those three point guys. And it's great pressure on the ball. Mm -hmm. Cochran, a three, no. So I'm sorry, I got a piece. Well, it's just great pressure on the ball. Davidson actually didn't run anything. They just dribbled the ball around as the shot clock expired. They had to take a shot. Uh, Davidson kind of out of their pace a little bit because of the defensive pressure. It's not a team that typically gets into much offensively. Smith. And one and done for Louisville. So Poets pulls down the board. Davidson down four. Three and a half left in the first half. Another three-pointer miss. Torkovic. Tough rebound. The kid from Sweden. Cohen with a size mismatch. And a little shake and bake to finish. It's been Cohen in the paint for Davidson in the last few possessions. Good recognition by Davidson. And Swapshire tried to come over and help, but that's Swapshire, not Jane, coming over and help, and that makes a difference. Southern Conference Player of the Year, Jake Cohen. Averaging 14 a game, only Brooks averaging more for Davidson. Siva, and they close it out, going the other way. Offensive foul, and Bob McKillop is fired up. High fives from the head coach. Davidson on the defensive end, but how about Jake Cohen, player of the year in the SOCON, coming up big for Davidson at the end of the first half. Three, but they're really showing Greg Gumbel in New York with a tournament update for you over on True TV in the East Kansas State has come from behind Angel Rodriguez with the layup part of an 11 2 run to Davidson with a basketball and they'll have to deal with Louisville's full court pressure here hard to say who's withstood what here you've got a couple of players on the bench for Louisville in foul trouble in Jag and Siva Davidson those are two, has not those. made their, their three-pointers, however. And there's another miss. And another three-point miss. So I think both coaches have something to look at here. Now coming up on AT&T at the half, we'll get you caught up on all the latest tournament news, highlights, and updates. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half.
We talked about Davidson and their ability to shoot the three, but they're really showing, as we've mentioned before, some versatility in offense, taking the ball inside, and now on the offensive boards, drawing the foul. However, the Wildcats have <laughs> missed their last couple of free throws, and that's a very odd situation for Bob McKillop. Well, Davidson, that's one of the things they do best. Highest free throw percentage in the nation as a team this year. Their starters averaged 81% from the free throw line this season. This is not really the way that Davidson wants to play. The pace is a little bit too slow, but it has actually worked to their advantage. Peyton Siva in the ball game has those two fouls in addition to four turnovers. All of those turnovers coming in the half court situation, and he's out of the game now. Well, the Hannon trying to size up a three. Shot clock down to 12. There's Smith. And a good look inside. Man has it knocked away by Ware, and that one is going to count. Mahana and the freshman, a chance for a three-point play. The problem for Davidson is they they can't keep Bahannon out of there once he misses the shot. Bahannon has been in there a couple of times, missed the first shot, been able to get able to get back up and get the second one. Bahannon with four points. See Brooks to the bench. Well, that's Brooks' second personal foul. Ahead and averaging nine a game. Look at the rebounds, 7.4. Dan, he has eight boards in this game already. And it looked like it was touched last by Ware. That's Louisville basketball. Chance to add to it here. They're up four with the basketball. Under two minutes left in the first half. No Siva, no Jang. Russ Smith running the point. Defensive specialist, but getting a lot of minutes here. Almost, well, he did leave his feet too soon. Nobody home for the pass. That's turnover number seven for the Cardinals. Cohen with a serious size advantage. But that's great defense by Smith. He just wouldn't let him by. And Smith a little erratic with a dribble to get Ware to the floor. His man, Droney knocks it away. Davidson not afraid to hit the deck. Uh, I, the intensity for both teams is really impressive. And particularly on the defensive end, Rick Pitino's guys have done a great job. As Cohen takes the ball to the basket, he's got the size advantage, but Smith simply moves his feet and forces Cohen to shoot over him. And then the last second help from Curick. But there's another turnover now for Louisville. Man got a piece but knocked it off the head and so Davidson ball. Brian, I'm telling you now, Louisville is not really playing very well right at the moment. They're turning the ball over. Steve is on the bench. Jang is on the bench. This is the opportunity for Davidson. And I think that if they don't take advantage of the opportunity and you know, get in a little bit more of an offensive rhythm, they're gonna, they may regret it later in the game. And another three-pointer missed. Louisville basketball, so a missed opportunity. And a three-pointer on the other end for Louisville. So Russ Smith taking over the minutes from Siva comes up big here, and he is now going to be charged with a foul. Got tangled up with J.P. Coleman. Now that's a foul I think you take simply because that keeps the pressure on. And Louisville, they only shoot about 31% from beyond the arc as a team. But here's a nice three in transition. Louisville not having very many opportunities lately in transition, but they capitalize there. And I, I really do think that Davidson's inability to shoot the three here in the first half, uh, they've missed a prime opportunity to get control of the game. They've missed their last 10 three-point attempts, and they continue to miss free throws. So the strength of their game... Now under a minute, Davidson wants a timeout here. Bob McKillop barking for a timeout to set up a possession for Davidson. Bit of an ugly start out of the ordinary for both of these teams. Davidson two for 12 from beyond the three-point arc. Jang on the bench with three personal fouls, but in addition to Wildcats only four for seven from the free throw line. They're a team that shoots 76%, and a couple of those have been the front ends of the one and one, so the Wildcats leaving a lot of points out there. Bob Kennep calling the timeout, trying to 
Get something set up offensively for Davidson. And there's a foul. Bahannon got a piece of Nick Cochran. What a free throw situation developing into a story for Davidson. Just four for seven from the free throw line. We mentioned the top team in the Southern Conference in free throw percentage. And they went for a little help outside the program for their free throw percentage this year, but it's not showing up here today. Now this kid's an 89% free throw shooter. It's one of two substitutions as Droney will check in for Kalinowski. Now the shot clock is off, and so Louisville's going to try to get the last shot of the half. And what this game has been so far for Louisville is a lot like many of their Big East games. They've had to grind it out. They haven't been perfect or even very efficient sometimes, but they've been good enough. Elijah Justice and more points, more production from the guards in the paint against Davidson. Louisville is wearing out the Wildcats in there. Well, that's just a great, great job of taking advantage of the situation. Davidson is playing defense like they're going to hold it for the last shot, and he just took it right to the basket. Down to three, two. Got to get a shot up. Man, and he, did it count? No, it did not. Mike Littlefield waves it off. And Davidson cannot respond at the end of the first half. Louisville with an eight-point lead in a slugfest here without some of their star players lost in foul trouble. Now keep, it, keep in mind, if the ball's in the hand of the player when the clock goes to all zeros, it's no good. Clearly, that ball's still in his hand. He's not able to get it up there. As we check in with Jen Hildreth with Rick Patino. Jen. Thanks, guys. Coach, your team with the lead, but you had to play a good portion of this game with a couple of key players on the bench. How does that affect what you can do? Well, we really got a difficult whistle. And I don't mean a bad whistle, a difficult whistle. I thought Gorky had a perfect clock on one. I didn't think he fouled on three. And, and that's the breaks of the game sometimes. Referees don't see everything. It's a very tough game to officiate. So Gorky on the bench, I thought our guys did a brilliant job of staying in this game. So what are you going to tell your guys at the half? Well, we just got to keep the pressure on them. That we're playing excellent defense. We're, we're doing a much better job on offense than we've been in a long time. So I think the Big East tournament helped us there. Great. Thank you, Coach. Produced so far in DeMond Brooks. Moment ago, Jen caught up with Bob McKillop. Coach, your lowest scoring half of the season. What do you do to get your offense to be more effective? Well, we got to shoot the ball better. Um, uh, shocked by our 5 for 10 from the line, 2 for 12 from 3. And, of course, 30% from the floor is not going to do it. But credit Louisville. Louisville's done a great job defensively. Uh, they're out on our shooters. They have a great break on the ball. So they've been very efficient about what they've done defensively. How do you like the pace of the game? Um, I, believe it or not, the pressure, we've not, gone, we've, we've not mishandled the ball, but we haven't made them pay for pressing us. We, we've got to make them pay for pressing us. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Jen. All right, Jen Eldred with Bob McKillop. He was animated in that first half. But Davidson, a season-low 25 first-half points. Their low had been 26. That was one of their two conference losses. That was against Samford earlier this year. So Davidson basketball to start number two, and right away a turnover at Siva. Swipes it free from Cherapowicz and finishes at the rim, and Siva trying to get Louisville some energy here. And that's certainly not the way Davidson wanted to start the half. Louisville's half-court defense has just been very, very good. Davidson has been back on their heels. Davidson likes to attack, but it's been Louisville who's been attacking them. And this is the guy Davidson needs to get going. Devon Brooks has Cohen with his free inside. Good pass from Brooks. Cohen now with 11 for Davidson. And a turnover to Smith gives it away. How about Louisville in the paint, especially with their guards, Dan? Well, it's interesting that this statistic, Louisville's done a great job getting points on the inside, but it hasn't been the power game. It hasn't been back to the basket play. For the most part, it's been guys driving the ball to the basket, although Bahannon does have a couple of offensive rebound scores. But Davidson has not been able to cut off that penetration to the basket with the dribble. Now you think points in the paint for Louisville, and you think Gorgie Jang is Cohen comes up big again, so back-to-back -back possessions inside for Cohen. Patino has 
Jang on the bench to start the second half. Seth Davis was commenting at the half about how Patino would handle Jang, but Cohen having a field day without Jang in there. Way over on CBS. Back to Portland, Brian and Dan. Hi, right, Greg, thanks. So the their first appearance since 91 in the tournament and a quick exit for them. The Wildcats advancing. Louisville basketball here in Portland and a six point lead. Siva had it knocked away. Looked like Brooks got a piece of that. That's the first time that Davidson has been able to control Peyton Siva in the paint. Cohen, he has been red hot for Davidson, but a traveling violation. As we went to break, we talked about. The bracket here at Portland and Louisville and Davidson. Coming up next, we have New Mexico and Long Beach State. And uh, the winner from this particular part of the bra bracket will end up in Phoenix. A lot of good matchups and a lot of eyes on Portland for the round of 64 here. Kirik steps up, cannot hit the mid range. Jang still on the bench, not starting in the second half. And in the meantime, Jake Cohen has scored 10 of Davidson's last 11 points, and all of that has come with Jang on the bench. Tara Poets, no. The Cochran, I think, hesitated to shoot the three-point shot. They're now two for 13 from beyond the arc. And even though that's the case, you can't hesitate. If you've got an open one, you've got to take it. Now Davidson has missed their last 11 three-point attempts. The head and fouled underneath. No coverage of the 2012 NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship begins Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern on ESPN2. For more information on game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. Cherapowicz with a foul. That's his third as Bahannon makes the first of two free throws. Shane Bahannon, 6'6", freshman. In a much bigger role after Rakeem Buckles, the junior from Miami, tore his ACL against Marquette in January. And Patino's put a lot on him. He's responded offensively. He hits two. He's been a real force on the boards today. Four offensive rebounds now. In the ball game, and while the pressure hasn't caused any turnovers, it's really getting Dave, gotten Davidson out of what they want to do offensively. Brooks hesitant, finally loses the basketball, and a foul on Demond Brooks. Now that's the second turnover against the Louisville pressure by Davidson here in this half. But even when they're not turning the ball over, this pressure is really causing them to be hesitant in their offense. That's just too much drizzling, dribbling by Demond Brooks. And now Brooks is on the bench with three fouls. Davidson's best scorer will take a seat. Clint Mann is in for him, giving up a lot of offense. Here's Bob McKillop with this swap. This is a very dangerous part of the game here for Davidson. They, you know, they continue to struggle on offense, and they could very easily get out of range here if they don't get a couple of stops and some scores. Well, a beautiful passing from Louisville, and Swapshire unable to finish at the rim. Too much passing. Bahannon should have taken that shot. Coleman being hounded by Siva. And another takeaway. This time, Russ Smith. Derek steps back for three. No. Swapshire going high for the board. Orville has come out with serious energy in half number two as Bahannon with a bucket for the Cardinals. Davidson in the danger zone here, down 10. They're just having a real, real struggle trying to put points on the board. Cohen's been their best scorer today, and he makes it. And one for Jake Cohen. 
Throw some size, some work in the paint. Bahannon, the freshman, getting it done inside. Already nine rebounds for Bahannon. Meanwhile, Jake Cohen trying to keep Davidson with a puncher's chance here in Portland. They've made the trip, long trip for both of these teams. About 2,000 miles apiece to get here to Portland, 39-31. And Dan Jang is back in. He's only played five minutes in this game so far. First, he's had that those foul problems, but he's blocked two shots. And Davidson, their offense in the second half, has been getting the ball inside to Cohen. We'll see if that stops now that Jang is in the game. Cohen hits a free throw, completes the three-point play, and substitutions for Bob McCallop. So, well, Jared Poich goes to the bench, and he's a guy that normally scores the ball pretty effectively. Averages over 10 points a game, and he has not scored today. Mm. Meanwhile, Jake Cohen has exactly half of Davidson's points, 16 of the 32 points. Seven-point Louisville lead. See the play with two fouls as well, and it knocked away, and a foul is called on Clint Mann, I believe. Check that. Fouls on Cochran. Siva continues to do a really nice job getting the ball into the lane. Now he hasn't always been extremely efficiency when he gets it, efficient when he gets it in the lane. He's turned it over four times, but he's really kept the pressure on that Davidson defense. A long travel for Louisville here to Portland, but for Peyton Siva, this is exactly where he wanted to end up. A bit of a homecoming for him. He was the Mr. Basketball selection in the state of Washington from Seattle. Got a big group here, including his father. Well, he's got four turnovers, but he's also got now got 13 points to go along with six assists. So he's been a big factor getting the ball in the lane and getting that Louisville offense roll. Play with a couple of fouls. Siva gives Louisville a nine-point lead. There's a whistle. And Smith with the foul. Siva the homecoming king. He and Kyle Keurig. Now, Siva was, uh, Keurig was first in 2010, and then Siva in 2011. That's a nice scepter there, guys. <laughs> I'm sure that's what you do. You pass the scepter to the next guy. I'm sure they're excited about that photograph. Natural born leaders, both of them. See, there's quite a story, troubled background, and what a career he is having at Louisville. Why not look to Cohen? They had it knocked away, this time from the help side. Yeah, for more on Peyton Siva, we check in with Jen Hildreth. Well, I'm sure you guys will really appreciate this, but I just wanted you to know. I felt pretty special yesterday when I was in the Louisville locker room and I found myself sitting between the two homecoming kings. I mean, that doesn't happen every day, you know? Well, it's very good to point out. And their Sunday best. The scepter, though, is what really did it. I'd like them to see it hold it up a little higher, actually, next time. That gives you some kind of superpower, doesn't it, the scepter? Now, Davidson can use, uh, could use some superpower now because they, uh, Louisville has complete control of this basketball game. Siva stops and pops and gets a friendly bounce. So Peyton Siva. Biggest lead for Louisville. You know, Davidson, they have to work really, really hard to get the ball into position where they can even run their offense, much less run the offense. That was the matchup going into this game. A team that is efficient offensively like Davidson in the Southern Conference against a lockdown defensive team as Cohen misses. And it's taken away. Well done. Norman, boy, the three-pointers just have not fallen. But even when there's no pressure there, they're looking around trying to find the pressure, and so everything is hurried. Foul belongs to Louisville. Just a reminder, Conan's all new next week on TBS. Don't miss you and McGregor, Shaquille O'Neal, Joel McHale, and Will Ferrell. All new Conan starting Monday at 11 Eastern, 10 Central on TBS. We are in Portland. And Louisville up 11 on Davidson. And a foul and a basket and a big bucket 
for the Wildcats as Clint Mann with a chance for a three-point play. He just snuck in front of Peyton Seaver, who picked up his third personal foul. Davidson has had to work so hard for their scoring opportunities, and this is just a situation where a man gets great position on Siva on that inbounds play. And Bob McKillop told us yesterday he thought that they needed to get what he called special teams play, good special teams play from all five of his guys, and he said inbounds plays were one of his special teams plays, and they got some success right there. One of his uh, six keys to victory that when he gets done with the list ends up being about 15 <laughs> subsets of each key for Bob McKillop. Well, a big possession for Davidson as they... Climb back to single digits. Smith, no, the head is there, no. And last touch by Davidson. So Louisville will retain possession. Shane Bahannon has been a bear on the boards today. Ten rebounds for the freshman from Cincinnati. He does such a nice job working to get in position. He's one of those guys who just seems to know where the ball's going, and he goes and grabs it. Siva just wiggles himself free. He did a lot of that in the first half. Now, when he's doing that, it's very difficult to do anything defensively. Siva now with 17 points on 7 of 11 shooting, and most of that work has come inside the paint. Man against Jang. Nice move. Man finishes. How about that? Unexpected from the Iowa State transfer. Well, now they've got to get some stops defensively, and they've had a very difficult time keeping Peyton Siva out of the lane. And I think that's going to be a big key. Does Davidson have a push in him? Louisville's been able to hold him off. Move the hand and do it. His work against Mann. That's a block. Man. Charged with a foul. And Peyton Siva, we've talked the entire game about his cleverness with the basketball on the inside. He just splits through, and then, man, he actually stumbling a little bit, but he gets right by Jeng. And again, Jeng's got those three personal fouls, so he's got to be careful. So Cohen is out. He's been their best scorer for Davidson. He'll take a seat with 16 points. Louisville ball. I don't think Davidson is going to be able to beat Louisville two at a time. They've got to get the three-pointer going, and they haven't been able to do so thus far in the game. Davidson, two for 13 from behind the arc. Remember, they made the first two. Haven't made one since. Been a long drought. Brooks. And see, Brooks held on to that ball too long. He misses the basket. As soon as he gets the ball, the defense collapses. If he passes it right back to Kalinowski, they've got a wide-open three-point shot, but he just held on to the ball too long. Brooks is averaging 16 a game. He's their best scorer, but has just three today. As Siva. And inside the Hannon. Another board, another bucket. As a defender, you're so concerned with that guy driving to the basket, you're not really paying attention to your own guy, and Bahannon takes advantage of that situation, gets himself in great rebounding position. It's a double-double for Bahannon, 10 points, 11 boards, and man walked with it. Traveling violation on Davidson, and a timeout on the floor. 10-point Louisville lead. TBS soon as we're done here. Meanwhile, Rick Pitino and the Louisville Cardinals Looked like they were ready to blow the doors off Davidson. Davidson has clawed back. It's a 10-point game. 11.06 remaining in regulation. And Louisville trying to avoid the third consecutive season being ousted in the round of 64. Moorhead State got him last year. It was Cal the year before. It's a Louisville team that you get the sense they're in complete control of this game. Bahannon to the basket, foul, and Bahannon to the line. He's had a major impact in the second half. He was huge on the boards in the first half. Well, I think if you're Davidson, you just have to, that, that wasn't a real smart defensive play. Bahannon is a guy who shoots 15% from beyond the three-point arc, so you don't run out there that hard and guard him and allow him to drive by. By the way, that is foul number four on DeMond Brooks, and he will head to the bench. 
Well, it was Cohen who went out to guard Bahannon. Brooks picked up the foul coming to help, and that's usually the way it goes. But Bahannon, he's been a force on the inside. He hasn't, you know, he hasn't tried to do too much. He's let the game come to him. He's gotten great position on the inside, gotten offensive rebounds. Don't forget, we got action on all four networks going on. You're in control. You can see whoever you want to see right now in some terrific games. True TV, TNT, CBS, and of course, right here on TBS at Louisville and Davidson. Louisville basketball. Another turnover for Davidson. They've turned it over six times now in the second half after only three in the first half. Siva right up against Cohen. No. Man with a rebound. See if Davidson can get something started with their three point shooters. Another one passed up. And that's going to be a foul on Peyton Siva, and that is his fourth foul. So now Jang and Siva. Jang still with three, Siva with four. And that's going to force Patino to his bench as Russ Smith will check in. Well, you don't lose anything defensively there, but of course, Siva has been orchestrating the offense. Cherapowicz, another missed three pointer. And that will be the story of this game unless Davidson can find the range at some point here. They're running out of time. Uh, it's time that they started to make a move. You don't want to get yourself so far down that this is a Louisville team that's really used to grinding it out. Davidson just 2 of 14 from behind the arc. Smith unable to connect. One and done for Louisville. Cohen back in with 16 points. He's been their most reliable scorer, especially when Jang was on the bench. But even with that long miss, Louisville back effectively on defense. No transition opportunities for Davidson in this game. Man hits a big shot, and he's had a couple of big buckets here in the second half. Yeah, had a nice take to the rim against Jang a moment ago, and now steps back and hits the jumper. Back to 10. Louisville with the lead. Nine and a half remaining. Carrick. And Sarah Poets with a rebound. And feel it, but no. Smith pushing the Cardinals. And Patino telling his guys, slow down. There's a whistle, a block. And Russ Smith will head to the free throw line. And probably the biggest factor in the ball game so far offensively for Louisville has been Peyton Siva. Here he comes up with the steal and gets the easy basket. But his ability to get the ball into the lane has really disrupted what Davidson's been trying to do defensively. This is fairly typical right there of what we've seen from him throughout the ball game. Siva with four fouls. He has 17 points and six assists thus far. But of course, he doesn't get an assist on one of those plays where he drove to the basket and missed the shot, but he drew all the defenders, and Bahannon was available for an offensive rebound and a score, but he assisted on the play, even though he doesn't get one in the box score. Russ Smith, a couple of free throws. Siva's replacement. And we get a warning now uh, against Louisville. Delay a game warning and <laughs> don't leave go of the basketball so Davidson can get it in bounds. And that Louisville pressure. Let's see that. And you heard Bob McKillop tell Jen at halftime that it's not a matter of just getting down, getting the ball down the court. They have to make Louisville pay for that pressure, and they have not been able to do it. When Louisville doesn't steal the ball, they still make it very difficult for Davidson to score. Smith had it blocked, but a foul on oh, Cochran. Surprised Davidson not attacking Jang a little more. But as you said, having a tough time even well, getting I, into it. I think they, they're trying to, but Jang, first of all, is being very intelligent out there. And he's, you know, it's not, he's not being necessarily careful. He's just being smart about it. And that Louisville defense, it's not exactly a man-to-man. -man, it's not exactly a zone. It combines principles of both. And so he doesn't really have to go one on one with anybody when they're playing the zone principles. And he's just been able to stay out of out of harm's way. 
You're not saying Rick Pitino is playing something other than man to man, are you? <laughs> Smith, speaking of defense, their steals leader in for Siva. And more free throws for Smith. Kalinowski. Look at how fast Louisville gets back on defense. The superior athletic athletically. Davidson was counting on their shooting, specifically their three point shooting, because they both want to play the similar styles as Cherapowicz finally breaks the seal from three point range. It has been a long drought since early in the first half with a three pointer for Davidson. Their poets gets the pass and drops it back within 10 as Davidson. One seed for time. Tom Enzo has had a team that's a number one seed and uh, he's had pretty good success taking those number one seeds to the final four. I think that Memphis St. Louis game is has the potential to be a really strong game. And in fact, throughout the tournament, the eight, nine games, and that's normally the case, but I think this year there's some really, really good matchups, some strong matchups in that eight, nine game. Very intriguing matchups here in Portland, not just in the west, but also in the south portion of this bracket. And we'll have them for you all day today. Those two on TBS, the others on CBS later tonight. Louisville coming out of the timeout. Had it knocked away. Russ Smith had it blocked and a basket underneath as Louisville is able to recover and Jang. Cleans it up for the Cardinals. Russ Smith had it knocked away, and Jang's able to come up with it because Louisville had such great movement, both of players and the ball on that possession. The defense got disorganized. Nobody was able to block out Jang. And that's what we've seen time and time again from Louisville. They're big guys, Bahannon and now Jang. They're really doing a nice job finding those open rebounding spaces. And Jang completes the three-point play. So it's a 13-point lead for Louisville. See what Davidson scoring a ton of points this year in the top 12 in scoring, but Louisville has locked them down. They, they have to work so hard just to get in position to start their offense. Coleman had that one contested. Even when you think you're open, you're not open. So Louisville can close out quickly. It's Elisha Justice, and he turns it over. Kalinowski goes all the way. Well, Jane didn't block that one, but he sure changed it. <laughs> James played very well with three fouls. Did not start this second half. Picked up all three of those fouls in the first half. He's been protective of his position. Brett Smith running a point for Peyton Siva. Siva's on the bench with four. Siva sitting with 17 points. Smith will take it. Got the idea. He wasn't ready to give that one up. <laughs> well, that was not a very good offensive sequence for Louisville. Jang deflected that one. That's Jang again being a presence on the inside. And Bob McKillop just frustration spewing out of the Davidson coach. But no continuity offensively. The three-point shooting has vacated him. And they've struggled from the free throw line when they've gotten there. Sarapowicz swatted by Jang high off the glass. And coming free is Mann underneath. Third block for Jang, but Mann puts Davidson back on the board, back with an 11. Davidson now looking for some stops. the shot clock Russ Smith no what's the danger zone for Patino here with this 11 point lead as far as Peyton Siva is concerned well I think I think they still have control of the game so I'm not sure that he's got to be worried just yet offense not very efficient that time but the defense continues to be outstanding they lose some offense with Siva but get one of the Best defenders that Louisville has is nice. Russ Smith. They still have a double-figure lead. There's a travel on Russ Smith. 
Take a timeout. Jang affecting shots, blocking shots, making his presence known here in the second half after a first half full of foul trouble. I think the key has been the Louisville defense. We told you before the game, they're number three in the country in defensive field goal percentage or field goal percentage defense at 37. They've been better than that today. Davidson has really struggled not only to run the offense, but to get in position to run their offense. And if you're the Wildcats at Davidson, you shoot 34% from the field, 20% from beyond the arc, and 58% from the free throw line. That's not going to win you many games, and certainly it's not going to win you many NCAA tournament games. For those of you hunting for Syracuse, they are on True TV without Fab Mello. Underway against NC Asheville. So Davidson goes empty. And now Louisville with Elijah Justice rubbing the point. Working some clock. Well, Rick Petito said his team started to figure it out when they stopped fouling and started playing defense. They won four games in four days in the Big East tournament for the automatic bid. It is a constant theme for Patino. And he has the horses to do it. Moorhead State knocked him out last year in the round of 64. It was Cal the year before that. And whatever concerns there were of a, of a morning start, an AM start on the West Coast, 2,300 miles from Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville has handled Davidson and shut down a high-powered offense. And Louisville, while they haven't been perfect on offense, they have been good enough. Man, that's the way you, what your defense does for you. Your defense puts you in a position where you don't have to be perfect on the offensive end. So Jang with seven points. It's one of two. And it's desperation time here for Davidson. They need to get up some threes. They made three in this game. That's it. Devon Brooks has been non-existent, their best scorer, and he misses again. Well, the Louisville defense has really disrupted Davidson's ability to move the ball and move people around, and that's the key to the Davidson offense. They spread you out, and they move you around, and they move the ball, and Louisville has just stopped that and made Davidson a team of dribblers, and that's not the way the Wildcats play. Remember, we hit the air, Davidson a team... All five of their starters averaging in double digits. Speaking to that balance. Bahannon just working over DeMond Brooks inside. Again, he has done a nice job recognizing opportunities, not trying to do too much. He's had a fabulous game. Cohen will take a three. No. Bahannon, by the way, 14 points, 11 rebounds. A double-double for the freshman in his first NCAA tournament game. Action in Pittsburgh, Syracuse without Fab Mello. Brandon Trish, though, the jump shot. Four of his six points, or four of the six, back to Brian and Dan in Portland. All right, Greg, thanks. Mello, the one that got away from Rick Patino. And obviously the one that got away from uh, Syracuse right at the moment, too. That's a tough break for the Orange to lose him. Well, you think they can finish it out? Can they win yeah, a national I, championship? I really think though? they can. I think that one of the strengths of Syracuse all year long has been their depth. And I know how important Fab Mello is to the team, but... I mean, it's not like he's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, you miss him. I mean, he's a good player, but they've got other good players, and I think that they're veteran enough team that they can work around that. Well, Patino claims that he found Fabricio Mello, as he says. I found him, and he was certainly one that got away, and instead it was Gorgie Jang who the uh, Cardinals signed, and well, Jang's been a terrific player for Louisville. So Jang with his fourth foul. Mon Brooks been very quiet, and the lefty hits the first free throw. 
Well, Brooks is a guy who's not going to go and create his own shot necessarily, that he's got to move around in the offense, and guys have to find him based on that motion. And Louisville has just shut off all those avenues with their very, very strong half-court defense. And he's looking forward to this opening round. Grew up just 10 miles from the campus at Davidson, Hopewell High School, just outside Charlotte. Three minutes to go, and Louisville with control here against Davidson. Jarek saves the pass. And can't get the friendly rim. Just keep in mind, all those scores up above. If you're on the search with a remote control, you control everything. You can go find the game you want. All four networks, CBS, True TV, TNT, and right here on TBS. A whistle underneath. Now this year, enjoy more madness with Coke Zero. You can text DUNK to 2653 for a chance to win a trip to the 2012 NCAA Men's Final Four. That's Peyton Siva who has just fouled out of the game. Siva wasn't around long. Played just six minutes in this second half. Patino hasn't needed him. So he fouls out in that six-minute stretch in the second half. He scored eight points. Well, for the game, he's got 17 points. He's got six assists. He's got two steals. Went three for four from the free throw line. Had a couple of rebounds. So even though he fouled out of the game with two minutes and 33 seconds left, he's been very, very productive. And the fouls will certainly be a topic of discussion for Patino. And if Louisville can hold off Davidson here, and they advance. And New Mexico and Long Beach State coming up next to make up the next opponent for this winner. Under normal circumstances, you would say that with Davidson's ability to shoot the three, they might have an opportunity in this game, but they have not been able to shoot the three very effectively today. And Louisville, of course, in no hurry now. Davidson just three for 17. From behind the arc. It's go time for Davidson. Inside the man, there's a three, and another one passed up. Nick so you got, you got to be ready to shoot the ball there if you're Cochran. He simply was not ready to shoot it when he caught it. You know, there have been so few openings, you just have to be ready when they have them. And Terrapova, Terrapovich, he was ready that time. 6'7", sophomore from Sweden. He's hit the two three-pointers in the second half. And does Davidson have enough in the tank from behind the arc to fight their way back? It's an eight-point game. Well, for Davidson, Dan, a team who lives and dies by the three, they're going to have to go fast if they're going to live with the three in advance in this one. They are going to have to go fast, but before they can go fast, they have to have the ball, and that's the problem right now. Can they put enough pressure on Louisville to steal the ball? And failing that... That's why you just saw Bahannon go out of the game. He's only a 59% free throw shooter, so Rick Pitino putting his better free throw shooters in the game. Because Davidson really doesn't have a lot of time if they if they, they can't allow Louisville to run the 35-second shot clock down. Every foul on Louisville will be two free throws for the Cardinals. Davidson is on a 7-0 run here in the last minute and 17. There's a whistle, and free throws coming up for Kyle Kirick. And that's the guy you want at the line. He's an 81% free throw shooter on the season. But Bob McKillop and his guys really have no choice. You try to get the steal, but you can't afford to let him run all the time off the clock. So if you don't get the steal, you've got a foul. Foul is on Nick Cochran, his fourth. And Cohen is back in for Clint Mann. Jake Cohen. With 18 points, he's been Davidson's best scorer today. Kirk with 11. He's at all three of his free throws. And he had 10 points early in the game, and he's been quiet offensively for most of that time, particularly here in the second half. Now you got to get threes. Cohen will take the dunk. Louisville will give up the two. And a timeout on the floor. Bob Killip calls a timeout for Davidson. Nice play by Kirk, just to get out of the way. Twos can't hurt you now. The Wildcats 
from Davidson, North Carolina, running out of time here. Cohen has 20 points in this game, 20 of Davidson's 53 points from their big man. And Jang is fouled in <laughs> a push, and Jang goes to the deck. Well, he really was fouled. How do you get a 6'11", 250-pounder on the ground? Jang has been an outstanding free throw shooter. Jang catches the ball, and all they're trying to do is foul him. That was the Davidson strategy right there. If the ball is being thrown in bounds, make sure you throw it in bounds to this guy. Put him on the free throw line. He's keeping his toes in bounds. Jang was eight for eight in the Big East semis from the free throw line. Hits the first here. And the Seeds Academy of Senegal. Jang, part of that impressive group of Division I basketball players. Jang speaks five languages. Patino so impressed with his progress at Louisville. Of course, and all of those guys on that list there in the NCAA tournament. So, the Seeds Academy getting guys to the dance. Jang told Patino when he committed, he wouldn't announce it publicly. He just shook his hand. He goes, no, I'm coming. He goes, Patino said, I've been through that. I want something in writing. He goes, I'm not from here. You can count on my word. So Jang hits them both. Ten-point game. Jang with nine points. Made five free throws in this one despite foul trouble all day. So you got to get threes now. If they're going to make two, you got to get three because now that's great. You cut the lead to eight, but you've just traded points. Can't Cohen, catch up trading. 20 state. Coming up next on TBS. Casper Ware at Long Beach State, the 49ers. Steve Alford's New Mexico Lobos. Clock winding, approaching a minute. See, the problem is you got to catch him to foul. And if you foul him, it's two free throws. And a timeout. Rick Patino calls a timeout. And in this tournament is you got to be able to guard, and their defense has been outstanding. And while particularly here in the second half, their offense hasn't been as efficient as it was in the first half, as I've said a couple of times, it has, it has been good enough. Well, for Davidson, tournament champs in the Southern Conference, the key going in was their shooting, and Bob McKillop made that clear yesterday. They're going to have to shoot to beat Louisville, and they have not shot the ball well, especially from behind the arc. They're four for 18 from three-point range today. One of the things where Davidson was going to struggle, if they got in a grinded-out kind of game, and that's what this has been, and the advantage all goes to Louisville because playing in the Big East, <laughs> that's the kind of games you play. Not a senior in McKillop's starting five, all averaging in double digits. As Swapshire hits the free throw, the big make for Louisville, and it extends the lead to nine. And that's a good point that you make about Davidson. 98% of their scoring, 96% of their rebounding come from non-seniors. So Bob McKillop, uh, future looks really bright at Davidson. Of course, the future's often bright at Davidson. He's done an outstanding job there. That's one of the more consistent programs in the country. You know, he's able to get guys, you know, of course, they stay four years, and they're really good players, and you get that experience. And this will be a learning experience for Davidson. You know, playing against this kind of athletic, physical team has to help them down the road. Although it's not much of a help today. Check the bar above, raising an eyebrow on True TV. All tied up, the number one seed, Syracuse. North Carolina, Asheville. Now, North Carolina Asheville is a veteran team. We're talking about Davidson being a veteran team. North Carolina Asheville, Matt Dickey, J.P. Prim are two outstanding guards. They can shoot the ball against that Syracuse zone. And will this be the day? You know, you don't know. That someday a 16 is going to be the one. It's got to happen sooner or later. Could it be today? See Marquette out in front of BYU. BYU, that great comeback historic comeback 25 points down on Tuesday Louisville beat Marquette on their way to their Big East title took care of Seton Hall Marquette then Notre Dame and Cincinnati four and four nights
And now they don't have to answer the questions any longer if they finish this out here in the last 50 seconds about the round of 64 exits. I just think it's a solid all-around performance by Louisville. This is a really good Davidson team, and they just took them out of everything they wanted to do. Okay, we have New Mexico and Long Beach State coming up next here on TBS. Now with more on Louisville, check in with Jen Hildreth. What do you have, Jen? Well, Brian, wouldn't you say that Louisville has just seemed very calm and comfortable throughout most of this game? A lead will do that for you. But, you know, I talked to Coach Patino's son, Richard Patino, who is also on the staff there, and he said, you know, he was kind of trying to lighten the guys up a little bit. In fact, he told them the other day, noting that this team has had some early exits in the NCAA tournament the past couple of years, he said, hey, guys, you know, there is another game in this NCAA tournament if you win. So <laughs> kind of trying to take a little bit of the pressure off and, then the Cardinals came out and did the rest with their play on the floor. Yeah, there's Richard. And both of these coaches, these head coaches, have their sons on the bench. A little good cop, bad cop, perhaps, from the Patino family. There's the son of Bob, Matt McKillop. There's a foul and more free throws coming up for Louisville. There's Matt. He was a starter at Davidson. Graduated in 06. Bob's other son, Brendan, started last year. Basketball family. Did you ever go to work with your son? I mean, in the same I think business? That, I think that would be really a, a thrill. I know it would be a thrill for me, and it would have been a thrill for me if I was working with my dad, and it would be a real thrill for me if I could work with one of my sons. So uh, that has to be a special thing for both parties. Well, now your son is, uh, well, is a Navy pilot. Now, I'm not <laughs> sure he really wants you in the cockpit with him. Well, and I certainly don't want to be there. So thank you very much. I can figure out how they get those planes <laughs> off those aircraft carriers, but I am not, I'm not so good on how they get them back on. So you analyze many things well, but that's not one of them. That's probably why your boy is so successful. Something you know nothing about. There's a foul on a three-point attempt. Kirk. Not a piece of the shooter. You know, isn't that interesting? As well as Louisville has defended the three all day, this is the first time we've seen this. Cochran just gets him up in the air. And, and one of the reasons maybe Keurig did that is Cochran has seemed reluctant to shoot it from out there throughout most of the game. Cochran, a pretty smart player, though. He saw the defender off his feet and... Tried to lean in and get the three three shot foul, which he did. Cochran from Vancouver. He's a junior. One of the players coming back for Bob McKillop next season. And he hits a three. Seven point game. 22.6 remaining. Louisville basketball. Pressure coming for Davidson. And Peyton Siva has fouled out. He is out of this game disqualified. And more free throws coming up. Kirk heads back to the line. Siva finished with 17 points as he fouls out. So New Mexico and Long Beach State, another terrific matchup. Long Beach State, the 12 seed. New Mexico and the 5 seed. Casper Ware, you don't want to miss it. Next on TBS, he is I'm some kind of point guard. I think Louisville matching up with either one of those teams would be very interesting. New Mexico, big and strong. They're also a team that shoots the three pretty well. Uh, they've got the big guy inside, Drew Gordon. That might be an interesting matchup. Uh, Zhang inside against Drew Gordon. And Long Beach State, they've got veteran players. And you just talked about Casper Ware. That would be a really interesting matchup. Casper Ware against Peyton Siva. It has been a trendy pick for many. The upset win for Long Beach State. We'll see how it goes. And this free throw by Kirk. Seven point game. Can't add to the lead, Louisville. And Davidson will take the two from Kalinowski. It's a five point game with just under 10 seconds remaining. And a foul on Chris Smith. 
So a couple of missed free throws turns into a two for Davidson. Well, the key is with the missed free throws, you cut into the lead by scoring two. And as, as they tried to do a comeback, they traded two for two on too many possessions. And even though they're able to cut into the lead, it's it would be absolutely miraculous if they could pull something off here in this last nine and a half seconds. Two possession game, Chris Smith. Younger brother of J.R. Smith. The New York Knicks. Extends the lead to six for Louisville. Now yeah. that should do it right there. Seals it up, Chris Smith. With a couple of free throws. Coleman lets it go. No. And the clock will wind. And that is that. Louisville is advancing. It'll be New Mexico and Long Beach State. The season comes to an end for the Davidson Wildcats as Rick Patino exercised some of those round of 64 demons. The Cardinals are advancing. It'll be coming up Saturday. And who will it be? New Mexico and Long Beach State. Coming up next for us on TBS. Foul trouble, a problem for Louisville, but as it turns out, didn't need Jang. And see all that much here today. For Dan Bonner and Jed Hildreth, this is Brian Anderson saying so long from Portland. Louisville in control. And now